Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be trying out some new makeup products that I picked up at my local Marshalls. I had no intention of buying any new makeup, but you will not believe some of the things that I found at my Marshalls yesterday. Fantastic deals on some really amazing high-end makeup products that I cannot wait to try. I was surprised that they had so many good things there because I've noticed their makeup department or makeup aisle has kind of condensed and gotten a little bit smaller over the last year or two, but I scored some good ones. So we're gonna try them out together today. Kind of a more casual video. We'll be doing a little Christmas chit chat. I have a couple top five lists here they are not makeup lists these are like Christmas favorites of mine when it comes to movies and music should be a lot of fun I'm in a good mood today I'm really excited to play with these products but before we get to the makeup I want to send a special welcome to any of you that are new here thanks for joining me today I hope you enjoy this video and I hope you'll consider subscribing before you leave also all of you make sure notifications are turned on and with that out of the way let's take a look at some of these makeup products all right, I'm sure you already guessed this. I do have my foundation, my concealer, and my bronzer on. And I also put a little bit of eyeshadow primer on. Everything else is pretty much gonna be covered with some new stuff that I got. I got a new mascara, a couple new brow products, lip gloss, a cream blush and lip quad from Stila. Then I got a new eyeshadow palette. Why don't we start with the eyes? I wanna show you guys this eyeshadow palette. So I picked up the Urban Decay Wild Greens palette. I know nothing about this palette. This must have released while I was hidden under a rock sometime during the last couple years. So I don't know a lot about this one. Let's look it up really quick. All right, so they do still sell this at Ulta. It is currently on sale for half price, $22. I got mine for $16.99 at Marshalls. So if you have a TJ Maxx or a Marshalls near you, you might want to check there. They had a couple of them. Also, by the way, they had the Too Faced Natural Nudes. It was on sale at Sephora for I think $24.99 during the holidays. I actually don't know if it's still on sale, but they had several of those. They were $29.99, which I thought was a little steep. I mean, I knew I could probably get it for like $25 at Sephora, so I didn't pick that one up, but I'll be honest, I was laying in bed last night thinking maybe I should have gone with that one. Gosh, I'm such a sucker. Didn't I just get done saying in my last video, I don't need any more eyeshadow palettes? Well, here we are today. So here it is, very cute little palette. This one was in really good packaging. I could tell it had not been opened. So fortunately, nothing is broken inside here. This looks so cute. The color story looks adorable. I'll insert for you guys some swatches right here, just in case you're interested, because you can still buy this one on Ulta's website right now. I think this would make a really fun gift if you're into greens, and these look like pretty soft greens. You've got these tones here, which are really light and kind of minty. These ones that are also light, but a little bit more kind of khaki or yellow toned, which you guys know I love. And then you have some basic kind of peachy neutrals there at the top. The pans are pretty small, but I think the packaging is really fun. It does have really good reviews. I'm looking at the Ulta website right now. There are 1,700 four and a half star reviews and I have not tried out an Urban Decay palette since my Born to Run palette, which I decluttered last year. And that was one of my favorite palettes. That was actually kind of a sad party. So let's take a look at this one. Let's dip into it. It looks so pretty, you guys. Lots of soft kind of pastel -y nudes. If you're into neutrals, I imagine you would love this color story. It looks pretty simple and basic. Nothing too vibrant or too dark. So I wanna start off with this shade right here. This is the shade Earthside. I'm gonna dip into that with my refer number 16. I do have some concealer, and a little bit of my Alter Ego primer on my eyelids. I feel like this palette's gonna go really well with my sweater today, and I did not do that on purpose. I often do that on purpose, but today I didn't. I just kind of put on my new sweater and didn't really think much about whether the palette would match it. Ooh, that's beautiful. That's a perfect tone for a first shade for me. Little bit cool tone, but not like gray. Very pretty. So I'm just running it pretty generously through the crease. I'm gonna run a little bit underneath the lower lash line. It's pretty light, so I can be pretty, what's the word, non-precise. So I'm gonna try not to talk about the makeup too much, and I'm gonna share with you guys some Christmas lists. So I wanted to do a top five Christmas movies and Christmas albums list for you guys. So I, I did some serious research for this. Like I really went through some lists online and thought about it and narrowed things down. I did my best, so let's just get into it. So first off, I have my top five Christmas or holiday movies. I read so many different top five lists and was so offended by the placement of some of my favorite movies in other people's lists. So I hope that this list, me sharing my list with you, if you feel differently about some of these movies or something that was not included, hopefully you're not offended because I was surprised at how much I was outraged. Let's start at number five. So my top five movies. This one was kind of tricky because I have some, I like a lot of real traditional movies, but I went with the ones that I just 
I could probably watch over and over again. And my number five is gonna be the movie The Holiday. I barely consider this a Christmas movie. In fact, I almost considered not putting it on my list because it's kind of like, it's not super Christmassy, but I really, really love it. If you love a good chick flick, I think The Holiday is such a good movie. I love Jack Black. He's one of my favorite actors. He's hilarious. Love Kate Winslet. She's always been one of my favorite actresses. By the way, we're just going into this darker brown right here in the middle. And I've always had a bit of a crush on Jude Law. So this is like an all-star cast. I've gotta be honest, I don't really like Cameron Diaz. Something about her as an actress, like her personality just slightly annoys me. Not like in a serious way, I don't hate her. But she is beautiful and I give her a pass in this movie because it's just such a fun movie. If you like a good chick flip, this is such a good one. So I reluctantly included that one even though I don't consider it like super Christmassy. I don't watch it with my kids, but if we're talking just like a me movie that I love to watch this time of year, that's definitely one of them. Number four on my list, I went with the movie Elf. This is a classic. This one kind of took a while to grow on me. It's one of those movies that, and I felt the same way about, if you've seen Nacho Libre, or like Napoleon Dynamite. Both of those movies, the first time I watched them, I kind of thought, what, what is this? It's the strangest form of comedy. They took a while to grow on me and I kind of felt that way about Elf because Will Ferrell is hilarious, but he can be a little bit over the top. I think most comedians are like that. Like even comedies I used to watch, like Jim Carrey comedies from when I was in high school. Oh, who else? Chris Farley. They're over the top. Adam Sandler. I mean, so many comedians can be a little bit much. And I felt that way about Will Ferrell in Elf. But once, once you watch it a few times, it's really grown on me. It is a classic. All of my kids love that one. It's one that we love watching together as a family every year. We probably watched that one like four times before Christmas. <laughs> for number three, I went with the Christmas story, the original. Such a great one. I kind of wanted to put this one a little bit higher because it's such a classic. The narration in this movie is what makes it amazing. I'm sure you're all familiar with it. It's just so, so good. All my kids love it. And I love that the movies that I loved so much as a kid, my kids love them still, even though they're older. And this is one of those, which is, it's kind of rare. It's hard to find movies like that, that are kind of timeless and they're not too young, like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, which is a fun one, but I kind of feel like you outgrow that one. Christmas Story, never disappoints though. My number two Christmas movie is It's a Wonderful Life. This one I kind of feel like deserves the number one spot. If we're talking like a Christmas movie that just epitomizes the spirit of Christmas, it is It's a Wonderful Life. I think every list that I read had this at the number one spot and I do feel like it deserves that spot, but I'll explain why it didn't get it because of what my number one movie is. But it is one of my favorites. One of the reasons I didn't give this one the number one spot is I didn't like it as a kid because it was in black and white and I could not watch black and white movies as a kid. Like, felt kind of like torture to me for some reason. I just assumed black and white movies were old and boring. So I didn't learn to love this one until I was a little bit older. And I have watched this movie with my kids. They've seen it several times, but I kind of get the sense that they sort of feel the same way about this one. I think it's one that you have to be a little bit more mature to really appreciate the amazing message of It's a Wonderful Life and just the classic that it is. Also, It's a Wonderful Life, that's the movie I watch on Christmas Eve, by the way. Might want to get your kids out of the room, couple spoilers here, but this is the movie that I watch on Christmas Eve as I'm like prepping and wrapping and stuff late at night. I always put on It's a Wonderful Life. I need to start watching it at least once before then though, because I'm kind of only half paying attention and I'm super tired by what, one o'clock in the morning. But it's the one that I reserve for Christmas Eve to watch while I wrap. And that leads us to my number one movie, which is Home Alone. Home Alone is not only my favorite Christmas movie, it is probably in my top five favorite movies of all time. I just think this movie is magical. It's funny. The score is amazing. I mean, the John Williams music in this is just classic. It's so, so good. I love the message of the movie, but also the comedy. I love that there's a little bit of family dysfunction that kind of comes together in the end that I just think is so relatable. Even though I know it's kind of unrealistic, I just, there's just something about Home Alone. I've loved it since I was a young kid. I love it still. I will sometimes watch this movie like in July. I know that's weird, but that's how good I think it is. It's just so endearing to me. I absolutely, Love it, and it will always be one of my favorite movies, not just for Christmas, but of all time. Now I wanna add a little bit of this deep, deep green right here. We're gonna do a little bit of like smudgy liner with this color, because I'm just curious to see what it looks like. So that is my list. What do you guys think? Are you offended? Did I lose some subscribers? I hope not. There were some others I could have put on there. Miracle on 34th Street, both versions I think are great. I really like the Santa Claus. My kids love that one. I, I like it. It's not my favorite though. A couple more good like chick flick ones that I, 
read on some lists were While You Were Sleeping, which I do love that movie, and also Little Women. Although Little Women, I don't really, I mean, I know it's like Christmas like three times in that movie, but it doesn't all take place at Christmas time. So I kind of feel like it's not like really a Christmas movie. Only parts of it are. Speaking of Little Women, what's your favorite version of Little Women? I really like the new one, but I also love the one with Winona Ryder in it. So I watched that movie in theaters either in junior high or high school. I can't remember if I was in junior high or high school when that came out. I went with my friend to a theater to watch it and at the very end when Winona gets with Professor Bear, we were so grossed out because we thought he was so old in that movie. And of course we were like 14 years old. So of course we look at him and think he's ancient because he's what, 45 maybe in that movie, which is like my age. But it's always kind of stuck with me to where I'm like, I wish they would have just found someone slightly younger, slightly more attractive for that role. But that said, I do love that movie. Everything else about that movie is flawless and perfectly done. Christian Bale, oh gosh. Two best roles of all time, Little Women and Newsies. Double red hearts down below if you agree with me. Christian Bale and Newsies and Christian Bale and Little Women. There is no better Christian Bale than that, in my opinion. These are going on so well, you guys. I'm very impressed with this palette. 20 bucks on Ulta's website, or 22, or if you can find it at Marshall's. Haven't used everything, but it's impressing me so far. So now for the shimmer. Oh gosh, this is gonna be tricky. So this one looks so pretty. Kind of like a classic rose gold. Ooh, that's pretty. That reminds me. There's a Natasha Denona shade that this is reminding me of. I don't know exactly which one it is. I'll have to pull out my other palettes, but very pretty. Kind of a duochrome peachy gold with a subtle green shift, very beautiful. This shade though, the shade Twist, kind of like the silvery green. Oh yes, wow. And then this one, it's more of the blue toned green. Oh, stunning. We're probably gonna go with this one, I think. I feel like I can't not go with that one. It's just so perfect. Let's do that all over the lid. Beautiful, matches my sweater. It's gonna be a good day. Now, I would love to know what your favorite Christmas movies are. Leave them down below. Also, if you have good like chick flick, kind of hallmarky Christmas movies to recommend, I didn't include any of those. I do like watching them and not just Hallmark ones, but I feel like every streaming service does these now. HBO has their own, Netflix has their own, Amazon Prime even has their own kind of girly Christmas movies that have the same ending in every single one. You know what they are, we all love them. So pretty, so now I'm gonna take this shade right here, which is kind of a satiny shimmer, just a nice champagne. I always love a good champagne in a palette. I'm just gonna pop that in my inner corner just with my pinky, just being kind of lazy. It's a good thing about a neutral palette though. You can kind of just like throw things on. Less strategic with things and it still ends up looking okay. That looks amazing. That is such a pretty look. Very excited about this little surprising palette. Who would have known? I totally would never have picked this up if I didn't see it there. It's amazing how many things look very attractive in a Marshalls with a $16 price tag on them that you normally just wouldn't be that interested in. I want to mention one more thing for you guys. First off, Angie, my sister, if you're watching, fast forward like, Two minutes. So I found a brand new Benefit Cheek Stars palette. This is mine. I've had this for a couple of years. I love it. I think I paid the full $60 for this one when I got it a couple years ago. They had a couple of these at my Marshalls for $29. I ended up picking one up for my sister for her birthday, which is in a week or so. But man, if you guys can find this thing there, I highly recommend it. It's one of my favorite face palettes. I reach for it all the time. It's absolutely amazing. I did pick up a new mascara. I got the Milk Rise Mascara, which I have not tried. I have their, I've, I've tried out their Kush Mascara. I like it. I didn't love it, but I did like it. It was a good mascara. I have not yet tried this one. It had the same reviews as the Kush mascara. I think they both had 4.1 star reviews. Before we do that though, let me just add a little bit of liner. I want to take just a little bit of my Wet n Wild on my waterline. Now let's throw a little bit of this. This is like the coolest tube. It has this like rubberized outside by the way. This is a mini and I paid $6.99 for it at Marshalls. They had several of these. So let's just have a look at the brush. It's like a pretty basic brush. It's very slightly curved, kind of fluffy, kind of in the way that like the L'Oreal brush is, maybe not quite so big. It actually reminds me of like the original Voluminous brush. Speaking of mascaras, I am really liking the Kali Ray mini mascara that I tried out a couple of weeks ago. It's a tubing mascara. It doesn't remove quite as easily as the Thrive mascara but I do really like it and it wears really well. I'm curious to try it out once like the spring rolls around baseball season. 
see how it holds up to watery eyes because that's the true test of any mascara. I'm liking this one so far. Really volumizing, pretty lengthening, not too clumpy. Be honest, I'm like 20 inches away from my mirror and I don't have glasses or contacts on right now. So what I'm able to see <laughs> looks decent. Guess I'll find out when I'm editing. While I'm putting my mascara on, this might be a dangerous, dangerous thing to do, but let's move on to my music list. So I decided to do albums, like Christmas albums, rather than Christmas songs. This is a little bit tricky because there's a lot of my favorite songs that aren't part of full albums that I listen to, but I do have certain albums that I can put on at Christmas time and listen to the whole thing. They're classics, I always love them. So these are my picks. We're gonna start with number five. For number five, I had to go with Vince Gill. This is a classic one. This is one I used to listen to when I was younger, like in high school. My parents would listen to this one when I was first married. Me and my husband both bought it and had it and would listen to it at Christmas time. And it's kind of become a classic one. I don't, I don't listen to the album itself as much now because I mean, so much of how we listen to music now is playlists rather than albums. But a lot of the songs end up in playlists of ours and it is an album that I could put on the whole album and actually listen to it and enjoy it. For number four, I went with Josh Groban. This spot was a toss up. It was between Josh Groban and Michael, Michael Buble. I like both of their Christmas albums. Decided to go with Josh Groban though. I think that's probably one of my, one would edge out Michael Buble by just, my, I can't say that, Michael Buble by just a little bit. I love Michael Buble, but he's a, he's a little more jazzy sometimes. I'm not always in the mood for like the jazziness. But that said, I still really love that album too. But Josh Groban, who doesn't love Josh Groban's voice? When he showed up in the office, I know he's made some appearances acting wise and some random things, but I love his part on the office i think it's hilarious the the episode the garden party where there's andy and josh groban and like the singing scene oh my gosh that is one of the best comedy scenes ever there's just so much in that scene that i love the dynamic of andy who's a grown man still being the kid that's just not good enough i just think i mean if you have siblings in your life even if it's not as dramatic as this you kind of relate to that in some way and i just i love i love that whole episode and especially that scene and who doesn't love josh groban's voice it's like the most beautiful voice in the world. For number three, I went with Piano Guys. I don't know if you guys are all familiar with the Piano Guys. They're kind of a local to Utah. I don't know if you'd call them a group. Musicians, so it's a pianist and a cellist. But if you're not familiar with them, if you like some instrumental Christmas music, you've got to go look them up on YouTube. Look up their O Come O Come Emmanuel song. Amazing, one of the most beautiful versions of that song ever. Great Christmas album, another classic. So we'll get back to my top two, but before we do that, let's jump into the brows. I picked up this, this is the NYX Dip Shape and Go. Do they still sell this? I noticed a couple new things at my NYX display in my Walmart that were new, new brow products from them that I'm kind of interested in. I have a feeling this next year, my brow journey is going to continue. I kind of feel like I'm on the mission to find the perfect brow gel. Now this one's not a brow gel, but it was super cheap. It was like $3, so I had to pick it up anyways. This one's in the shade Ash Brown. This reminds me, so I got a product. It has a little like lid here that has pomade in it and then a spoolie on the end. I remember getting something from BoxyCharm that kind of reminds me of what this likely will be like. So yeah, you have this little like tube right here with some pomade in it. And then I'm assuming, okay, you've got like a dual, oh boy, this is, this is complicated. So you've got this part right here, which is the spoolie that you twist. Oh, okay, okay, this is, and then you just pull off the lid to the top, which has the brush. Okay, I'm looking at this brush, you guys. It looks a little chubby. I don't think I'm gonna use this brush. I actually have a better brush that I think, should I? I feel like I should use it because I'm reviewing the product. Okay, I'll use it, even though I have a feeling I'm not gonna like it. But I wanna show you how this product as a whole works. I don't wanna apply too much because we do have a brow gel that's quite dark that I wanna try. Oh gosh, though, guys, look at, I don't know if you guys can see that brush, though. It's just not like pinching together. So I have a feeling it's just not gonna be very precise, but oh, this, this could go very badly. I might have some very crazy brows today. Let's give it a quick swatch on the back of my hand. Okay, so there's the shade. It's a little dark. Oh, I'm trying to be really, really light-handed with it. 
because again, the brow gel we're gonna be using is tinted. Probably normally would have picked just one of these, but I really wanted to try them both. So we'll just try and apply a tiny bit of this, and then we'll jump over to that brow gel. Let's twist that back on, snap the lid on, and then twist this off. <laughs> To find the spoolie, I could I likely just use my own spoolie. Oh, that's a good spoolie, spoolie though. It looks bigger, but it really grabs your brow hairs. I really like an assertive brow brush that's really gonna get in there and grab your brow hairs. Sometimes brow brushes are a little bit weak. That's a good one though. Okay, my brows look pretty good right now. I feel like I'm gonna ruin them, but I do wanna try this. This is from Florence by Mills. Never tried anything out from this brand. This one was also $3.99. This is the Tint and Tame Brow Gel. I got the shade Dark Brown. I know it's gonna be dark. I knew it was going to be dark, but it was this or they had a really orangey brown one like Auburn, which obviously that wasn't going to work for me. And I do like a dark brown sometimes when used in the right way. So I went ahead and picked it up. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Look how dark that is, you guys. It's like charcoal almost. I'm still curious about this one. I have mixed feelings. I used to really love these super, super tiny spoolies, but this one's almost looks, looks. Again, I haven't used it yet, but it almost looks too small, but uh, I'm just lightly gonna, I tried to scrape some of the excess off so I don't get too much on my brows. Lightly comb it through. I'm gonna pause there, go back to that sort of brow brush. Where did it go? No, wrong side, dang it. I actually really like this brow brush. It's just really hard to find. Like which section is it in? Okay, that is a pretty nice looking brow though. It's dark, but I really like that shape. Okay, this brow brush is like amazing. Who would have known that I, I, I almost didn't even use this. I almost just used my own spoolie. This spoolie, is good like it really grabs my brows never underestimate the power of a good spoolie all right let's finish off on the other side this is a really wet brow gel i do like a wet brow gel though i've decided that i prefer one that's a little more on the wet side than the i don't know if waxy is the right word the ones that are like moussey i don't like the ones that are kind of matte and moussey quite as much these are a little trickier to work with though you got to be super careful especially when they're that dark Okay, why did I twist it back on? Mandy. Okay, so brows are done. I actually think they look really dark. I think they're probably a little bit too dark for me. I'm gonna try that brow gel again, just the brow gel alone, and see if maybe they're a little bit less dark. But I love the shape of them. I'm gonna keep playing with those. I actually think both of them are wins so far. Don't like the brush in this, but I think the product itself is really nice. Love the spoolie on this thing. Really, really good. So now let's move on to the blush. I picked up the Stila National Treasure Convertible Lip and Cheek Cream Quad in number two. So this has four shades in it, I believe. Okay, they're kind of tiny. Actually, those will be just right for my special little alter ego brush. Let me give them all a quick swatch. And by the way, I haven't forgot about my list. We will get back to my list in just a sec. Okay, so there's a nice orange. Ooh, actually, let's swatch them on my other hand. Ooh, they're really nice and creamy. Very emollient. There's like a peachy orange. I love this mauve shade right here. Like a nice berry. Ooh, that's like a rusty berry. I love, love shades like this. It's bright pink. Might be a little, eh, I bet I could share that out. That's pretty. And then this red, this kind of cherry color right here looks fun too. Ooh, that's fun. I've got to go with the mauve for today. I really want to try that cherry too, but I think for this look today, the mauve's going to look the best. So I'm going to dip into that. And while I do that, let's get back to my list. Again, this is my Alter Ego number four brush. Dip into this shade. So number two for Christmas albums, I'm going to go with Johnny Mathis. Love Johnny Mathis. If you're into the old school music, like from the, what, 50s, 60s, he's a classic. Love his album. That's another one that I, list I can listen to the whole album and I love the whole thing. Ooh, that's pretty. Pretty pigmented, but very, very pretty. We'll blend some of that out with my sponge in a sec here. Johnny Mathis kind of reminds me of like the Bean Crosby's, Nat King Cole's of the world. Maybe not quite so old and classic, but similar sound. But I like the entire album. I, I don't know that I've actually listened to an entire album from 
Bing Crosby and Nat King Cole. They usually are ones that are included in other playlists or on other albums. And then for my number one album, I decided to go with Amy Grant. This one is such a classic for me. My mom was a big Amy Grant fan growing up. We listened to the Amy Grant Christmas, Christmas album every year and I loved it. I love some of her non-traditional Christmas songs, which is rare. I don't always love the non-traditional Christmas songs like Breath of Heaven, that's one of hers. I think Kelly Clarkson redid that song. My husband hates that song, by the way. I'm gonna make my husband sound like a Scrooge. He's really not. He's just very picky with his Christmas music. He only likes very traditional songs. Like he doesn't like any songs that are poppy or like new. He doesn't mind a remake, but he doesn't like the like artist original kind of songs. Like Last Christmas, he will have a conniption fit when Last Christmas comes on the radio. I think that might be one of his least favorite Christmas songs ever. That or Mariah Carey. He also doesn't like Mariah Carey at all. But the reason I mention that is my husband actually is not a huge fan of Amy Grant's Christmas album. And I am so sad that he's not because I love it, but he doesn't like it. So it's hard for me to listen to that one. I have to find a time to listen to the Amy Grant Christmas album on my own because my husband doesn't like it very much. One of the few contentions that we have in our marriage is Amy Grant's Christmas album. I'm kind of kidding. And of course, none of my boys like it either. They don't like Amy Grant's Christmas album either. <laughs> I feel like my husband has poisoned them. I'm hoping that I can win Charlie over and teach her an appreciation for Amy Grant and her beautiful Christmas music. So those are my top five Christmas albums. I left a couple out. There were a couple that I felt like should be in the running. I just, I, they didn't quite make it. Mannheim Steamroller is definitely one. I love classic Mannheim Steamroller music. That's what I grew up listening to. I just can't take a lot of it. I get a little tired of the synthesized sound after a couple of songs, so I can't really listen to a full album like I used to be able to. And another honorable mention, David Archuleta. Huge David Archuleta fan. I love his Christmas album. My husband actually, like four years ago for Christmas, surprised me with tickets to his concert. He's He actually is from Utah. If you don't know who David Archuleta is, he won. No, did he win? I can't win American Idol or was he the runner-up? I can never keep straight who actually won. I don't think he did. I think he was runner-up. He was on American Idol back in the like post Kelly Clarkson days, like early first five seasons of American Idol. But he's from Utah. I love his voice. I love his Christmas music and his remakes and renditions of songs are just really, really beautiful. Okay, we are just about done. This is gonna be such a long video. I am so sorry, you guys. So one more thing to try out. This is from Bite Beauty. I found their Yay Sayer Plumping Lip Gloss at Marshalls for $4.99. This looks like a really, well, the sticker looks like a really pretty shade. Let's hope I like it. Oh, interesting. Okay, this is the most interesting packaging. It's one of those clicky, clicky things, kind of kind of giving me almost vibes of the four-in-one from Maybelline, which you guys know I don't really like that very much. But this thing at least is not foam. It's kind of like a rubberized top. It's like a fake Lipstick, you know the like lipsticks when you were a kid, the fake lipsticks that were just plastic? That's what this is, but it's white and it has a little hole in the top. So we're gonna see if we can squeeze some of the product out. Actually kind of, now that I'm thinking about it, kind of just reminds me of like a clicky version of the Laneige. Ugh, it's always dangerous the first time you use these things because you twist like 30 times and it won't come out, then all of a sudden it starts to come out and then it won't stop, so. Give me a second here. Okay, there it is. Ooh, that is a pretty shade. Let's give a little swatch on the back of my, oh my gosh. Okay, very sticky, be warned. It's very sticky, but very, very shiny. Kind of sheer, beautiful. Okay, I'm actually gonna put a little bit of lip liner on first. I'll take my Natasha Denona. I'm gonna let that set for just a sec. Leave me a comment down below if you guys have any commentary on my Christmas music list. I'd love to know what yours are. What's your number one Christmas album? Also, answer this very controversial question. Are you a fan of the Mariah Carey Christmas album? Yes, thumbs up or thumbs down? I feel like people have very strong feelings about this one. I personally am not the biggest Mariah Carey fan, which I'm kind of sad to say because when I was in junior high school, my very first school dance, I slow danced for the first time in my life to Mariah Carey's Hero. I hear that song and it literally transports me back to seventh grade, which maybe that's why I don't like Mariah Carey very much. <laughs> okay, let's apply the lip gloss. Let me know though, do you love Mariah Carey's Christmas album? Particularly All I Want for Christmas. The number one Christmas song, I think, in the world. My husband can't stand it. I don't love it. 
Like I won't selectively listen to it, but if it comes on a playlist, I won't turn it off. Okay, this stuff smells and tastes like a vanilla frosting with a touch of nutmeg, maybe? It almost has like a spice, like a carrot cake kind of flavor. I'll be honest, it tastes like carrot cake. I'm not gonna lie, I'm tasting it. That is so pleasant, very pretty. Not as sticky on my lips as I was thinking it was when I was swatching it. Okay, winner, major winner. I don't know if this is still available. Let me look really quick. So it looks like these are a little hard to find. You might be able to find them on Amazon. If I can find this, I will link it for you guys down below. I would totally buy this, like full price myself. I love how that feels. I love how it smells. You guys know the smell and the taste of a lip product is important to me. Totally worth the $4.99 I paid for it. I would even buy this for like $15. I mean, I like the smell and maybe even the feel as much or more than I like the Tower 28, which is one of my favorite glosses right now. And with that, I had better close up this video. This one I know is going to be so long. I appreciate you guys hanging in there with me. I hope that you enjoyed it. This was really fun for me to try out the makeup, to talk about Christmas movies and music. Let me know if you guys have any commentary on the makeup or the music and movies. I'd love to hear down in the comments below. Thank you all so much for stopping by. I hope you guys are all doing well. Let me give you one last reminder. If you are not yet subscribed, make sure to do that before you leave and I will see all of you in my next video. Bye. I've got my Yukon Cornelius cardigan on that I found at Marshall's as well. Is that offensive? If you're offended by that, I, I, I genuinely feel sorry for you. I enjoy sweet lip products. Sue me.